I've been a professional organizer for 20 years. And my first client was a real estate agent who hadn't sold a house in two years. And I said, well, how clean is your house? And she said, it's filthy. I said, well, let's clean it out. And then she sold four houses in a month and had the most successful year of her life. And my second, uh, my second client was a woman who was short on cash and really wanted to go to Bali and had this intuition. I said, let's clean out the trunk of your car. She says, why? I said, I have a feeling. And there's a check unopened for stock dividends for $12,000. That was under her children's Snapple-stained homework. And then this third client had a mother who was sick who was seeking a place in this high-level convalescent home with a five-year waiting list. And I said, what's under your bed? She said, what am I under my bed? I said, let's clean out under your bed. And I get this call three weeks later, and she goes, a miracle has happened. A bed has opened up for my mother. So these things taught me a few things. First of all, nature abhors a vacuum. You make room, and something good comes in. And homes are like hearts. If the entryway and the exit way, the arteries are clogged, they can't flow. And the things that people clog their lives with are remarkable. I've seen petrified dog waste, I've seen dead cats, I've seen dildos, and I've seen pistols, and I've seen Academy Awards. And the other thing that people clog their lives with are people who don't belong in them. So I had this one client, and we made a bonfire and burned all the notes and letters and emails from her ex-husband who had stolen her identity, and then she got offered her dream job. And... uh, Yeah, then there was a client whose husband had died, and I stood by her side while we released his ashes in the Hudson River. You have experiences like that. They put things in perspective. And I kept thinking about this rule of physics I learned in sixth grade, which was energy cannot be created or destroyed. It's just repurposed. And that was never more evident to me than this wonderful client I had named Q, who sadly passed away. She had been ill. She passed away during the span of our work together. Her mother hired me to clear out the estate with her widower. And we're clearing out her closet, and I find this shelf that's very dark, and I can't see what's in back of it. And I touch something, and the light flickers. I let go, and it stops. I reach, and the light flickers. Now, I had read somewhere that the newly departed, often tried to communicate through electricity, and I'd never had any experience with that. But every time I touched, I looked at her widower, and I pulled this basket out, and it had a note on it, and it said, Q's stuff, do not fuck with. (laughs) So I pushed it back. (laughs) Some people are not ready to let go. But... um, what I've realized from, from facilitating this process with dozens, if not hundreds, of people is that, um, well, many things, but uh, we're not our stuff. We confuse ourselves with our things. We're also not even our spouses, although we give ourselves away to them. And we're not even our bodies, actually. We're just this witness who observes the coming and going of all of these things and passes through for a moment. The Sufis have an expression which is, life is a bridge, don't build a house on it. That's all.